Hi everyone, welcome back to Football Anya, your home of Dutch football. It's podcast 102, available on YouTube, SoundCloud and iTunes. And it's time to talk about the Eredivisie restart. The second half of the season is upon us. And I'm Michael Statham with Mike Bell, the Football Anya editor, to preview pretty much every team in the league again. Let's talk about the Eredivisie title race. And um, finals are currently top of the league. We've got Ajax, PSV and RZ all chasing them. So we've got plenty to discuss there. Some transfers coming in and out of the league too. Um, Mike, are you looking forward to the second half of the season? Yeah, I think that after not a mini break for the World Cup, I mean, I know the Eredivisie usually has its winter break anyway, but I think this has obviously been an extended one. I'm excited to get back into it because I think that we're in for a very tight and exciting title race. And even at the bottom, um, it's all very tight, apart from maybe one one team that was set to go down. So I think that in the coming months, we're going to have a lot of big games um, a lot of excitement and yeah, yeah, right now you can't really call who's going to take that trophy home at the end of it. Mm, it's true. It's a work, nice way to get another World Cup, isn't it? To see which talents are still coming through ahead of things such as the Nations League. So of course, like always, people just get involved in the comments. Let us know what you're thinking ahead of the second half of the season. You know, some of you might be listening over on SoundCloud. So get over onto the YouTube channel as well and leave your thoughts there. Leave your thoughts on Twitter too and we'll get back to you. So let's start with final, shall we, Mike? They're top of the Eredivisie table at the moment. And I think with teams like Ajax um, having Alfred Schroeder as the head coach, with teams like PSV who now just lost Cody Hapo, RZ looking good. We'll talk about them later, of course. Final look like the best of this bunch at the minute that could go on and lift a bit of a surprise Eredivisie title. Three points clear at the moment. It could all change, of course. But I, I just think they're looking good. They're, they're a team that aren't necessarily full of superstars. Or can catch probably the best of those players. And um, there's lots to like. Arne Slot's a head coach, probably the best coach in the Eredivisie. I guess the only downside is that Gerno Trauner is out injured for a few months. What do you make of them going into the second half of the season? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of excitement around um, Rotterdam at the moment because they have, as you said, the best head coach in the Eredivisie at the moment in Arne Slot. And I think that they've assembled a squad that is capable of winning the title. I think that they have in Arkin Kutcher, arguably the, the best player in their division at the moment, now that Cody Gakpo's gone. So mm-hmm. if you've got him in midfield, and up front they've got Danilo and, and Jimenez who can score the goals. So I think on balance, they've got a, a squad that is definitely capable of going there and, and winning the title. Because I think that the problem with Ajax and PSV is that Yes, on paper they might have the stronger squads, but they always seem to drop points when you don't expect it. Whereas this Feyenoord team this season has just been consistent. Yeah. Yes, they've got injuries. They've got obviously Trauner out and Quentin Timbers out for a period of time. Um, the, the club didn't really know how long he's going to be. It seems to be could be months, could be weeks. Um, those are two blows, but I think that they'll be active on the transfer market. I think that. Mies Hilgers of FFC20 seems to be a big link that they're going for now for the centre-back. Yeah. If they get him in, that'd be a great deal. And then if they can maybe one in our midfielder, but then they've got backup. So they've got Weefer in the, the summer from Excelsior. They've got Olambo coming through, Klein coming through. So, yeah, for me, I think the, the final look really good. And their side actually excites me going to the second half of the season because I actually like mm. watching them play, um, which I, I can't say that about all the top four at the minute. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that everything right now is looking pretty pretty positive at Feyenoord. And if they can keep this up, I, there's no reason why they can't can't win this title because their, their rivals aren't as comfortable as they are. A lot of us saw this coming, I guess, when you finally got to the Europa Conference, um, the Europa Conference League final last season, that they could go on and progress into this, this kind of team, a team that could challenge Ajax at the top of the Eredivisie. We're seeing that now, but I think people called their interest on them when they lost so many players over the summer. But they've brought in all of these young players that have the potential to grow into, again, some fine players. But final hacks take a risk on them because they didn't know quite how they'd handle European football. I mean, Jimenez is one of those, isn't he? And and now he's becoming a main striker for them. And, and him and Danilo are, are, are two different players, but players that can kind of challenge each other. To score the goals, Dorison's another one had points to prove. He was he was in Germany, didn't do, um, didn't pull up any trees really. But now he's at Feyenoord. He's showing some of his potential. 
So it's like if all of these players can come good together, then they're going to make this title winning team. I just wonder how confident Arna Slut was. <laughs> but when when he took when he when he had this over the summer, thinking, gosh, I've just lost like the spine of my team. How are these players going to replace it? Yeah, and it could have been easy for him to, you know, throw his toys at the pram, I think, after Arneson left as well. Um, it might be a bit disarray with, with transfers, but I think they've bought well. Um, again, you can't say that for, for the rivals down in Amsterdam no. um, in the summer. Um, I think that the new signings have gelled well. There's Seismansky as well, and the field has been excellent um, yeah. on own. So I think the, the recruitment there has been excellent, and that's why they're they're reaping the reward of this because yes they have lost quite a lot of players but the ones that they've brought in mm. have improved them i mean even losing Senezi to bournemouth and then they brought in hanko at the back and hanko has been excellent so yeah. it's just ones like that like they can they can lose a, a, a moasia they can lose a, a Senezi, um and they've, they've got replacements there and they're doing well and even the youngsters i think Feyenoord right now have a bunch of youngsters that Probably one of the most exciting bunch of youngsters in in their division. You know, I actually are usually the ones that have the, the academy coming through, but right now I'd say Fire are ahead of them because of Jaden Slory, Moambo, and Klein. I think if we see more of them in the second half of the season, that'll be exciting as well because they're the future. And I think that everything in Rotterdam right now just seems seems very positive. And I think that the turmoil from a couple of years ago, um, before SWAT came in, is kind of gone. And they seem like a very stable club at the moment. And long may that con- mm-hmm. continue. Mm. let's touch upon final again in just a moment or so when we've talked about a couple of the other teams because i'm interested to hear mike who you think your favorites are to win the odyssey title at this stage and it would be great to have everyone's thoughts about this in the comments too i ran a little poll on twitter and it was really split as to who would do it let's talk about ajax next the title holders of course but looking really flat i don't understand why they kept hold of alfred Scherder's manager over the winter break it would have been the perfect chance to have parted ways with him and got in someone new to refresh them ahead of the second half of the campaign. You know, they've got, they've got a tough match in Europe coming up. And I, I don't see them getting through that. I think they'll get knocked out of Europe early. And I think it will be then a a, 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 a way of like revo- um, saving their season, if you like, by winning the Eredivisie, being out of Europe. But I don't, I don't see that happening either. I think there's too many exciting teams around them that are going to beat them again. They've lost to RZ already this season. I think that could, could even happen again. They just don't do well against these top sides. They're dropping points. They're going to drop points to Emmen before the winter break. It's not like a mess because it's not. They're still up there at the top, but it's not the Ajax we've seen in previous years. And one thing that sticks out in my head is Ericsson Hogg's obviously gone. A lot of the players are still there. Is it, is it as simple as that Schroeder's just not as good as Ten Hag? And do we think then... We do we have too high expectations on Schroeder to replace him? He's still up there with the mix, but I mean, in my view, I, I think that he's just he's a he's a he's a lot worse than than Ten Hag. I can do a lot better than him, and I should really have replaced him um, last month. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> you say it's not a mess, but I think that the Ajax are a mess at the moment. I think that off the pitch, the board level, I think they're a mess. Um, they tried to get. Right. Danny Blind back, he he came and said no. Um, I think Van der Sar is there, um, but obviously what he did was terrible and he should have left. But I don't think they've replaced Mark Overmars. I don't think they have that presence now off the pitch making the signings. They brought in Huntar and Hamstra. But if you look at the signings they made in the summer, like Grilich and Akampos, hardly seen any of them at yeah. all. Um, Bassi, I don't think he's justified his price tag at all. I think he's one of these players that will look great in one game and then the next one he's going to have two or three mistakes. And I don't think he's a consistent player. Um, and then the one that most Ajax fans are excited about, Conce Sao, he's just been used sparingly a couple of minutes at the end of the game. So recruitment-wise, not being good enough. Management-wise, not being good enough. I think that the majority, if not all, Ajax fans would want to see rid of him. But there's no one at that board level that's that's taken responsibility to say, right, you're not being good enough. You're gone. I mean, Van der Sar is making excuses for him, saying like, oh, it's, it's our fault in the summer. We didn't recruit well enough. We need to give him time. But from performance level, with the players that he's got, 
you should still be getting a lot more out of these players because even though they didn't recruit well in the summer, they still got a squad on paper, which is better than, yeah. if not all, most of the teams in their divisi, and they should be doing better than what they're doing now. Hmm. But they're not. Um, I think that January is going to be busy for them. I think they're going to get rid of a couple of players. I think, you know, Campos will probably leave, go back to Sevilla. Um, they'll bring in a new goalkeeper. Um, they'll probably bring in another couple of players as well. But whether they gel in time to to push them towards the title, it remains to be seen. Um, because right now, I, I, there's hardly any players in the Zayac side that I look at and go, oh, they're exciting. Um, Brian Brobby, maybe. Conce Sal, if he got game time. But I just think it's a very stale club at the moment. I think there's a few yeah. players that don't want to be there. Um, Edson Alvarez being the main one. I think that he, he was great last season. He wanted to leave in the summer. And then since the summer, he's been really poor. And if you're yeah, looking at Ajax, been turned, isn't it? Yeah, if you're looking at Ajax thinking, oh, we could have got 30, 40 million for him in the summer, mm. next summer he's going to get half that because he's been terrible. Um, and at the back, obviously, what's happened with Daily Blind, I think we can all agree that it's the right decision to drop him. Um, mm. And obviously, he's gone now and they've let him go. And there's obviously some things that have happened off the pitch between him and Shrouder that it's been decided it's better for him to leave on a free contract. But that's a very experienced player that they're just letting go. Yeah. Um, who could have made a difference. Maybe not a left back anymore because he's been exposed there. Maybe if they, in games where he could come on towards the end of games in midfield and be a leader, but no, they said, no, you're, you're gone. So yeah, I think that Schroeder has a huge job on his hands to turn this around because no Ajax fans are behind him. There's obviously been issues in the dressing room. The team just looks totally flat. I think that at some point, either halfway through uh, the second half of the season or in the summer, he's gone. So it, it's hard to see from now to the end of the season, everything just going back to being what it was under Ten Hag, just uh, a winning machine with no no issues. I just I can't see it. So, yeah, for me, I think that there's a lot of turmoil in Amsterdam that needs to be sorted at border level on the pitch and and manager level so we're seeing in the next couple of weeks who they sign um, and how they start the second half of the season because I think even pre-season friendly wise they weren't playing teams that I, don't, I think that would test them I mean the last game was against Telstar where, whereas you know PSV were playing AC Milan um, yeah. so you can't really gauge how, how good the side is at the moment so I think there's just a lot of problems there I think that a right back, they're not strong. Left back, Vindal's still trying to find his fitness. Centre back, they're not strong. Goalkeeper, they're not strong. Um, they're still trying to find the midfield balance and up front. Um, Dusan Tadic, I think, is is coming towards the end of his career and he keeps getting shoehorned in um, when there's players that should be starting ahead of him. So, yeah, I think it's just, it's not great. And for me, I... You think it is a mess, don't you? Yeah, I think that <laughs> if it keeps like this and they don't sign the right players... I, I can't see them winning the title. Mm. It just, it seems inevitable, doesn't it? But I can't believe that I absolutely get to this considering how well they've been managed in the past. But like you said there, that's the thing. There aren't visible board members anymore, really, that are pulling out all the stops um, to help lead the club. There's a really poor manager in place, in my view. And maybe I'm blindsided by it, but I just can't believe he hasn't been removed. Like I said already, and Hunter, like you said him there, I, I don't really find him that vocal, do you? Because Overmars and Van der Sar, you've always heard from in the past, whereas Hunter just seems to sit in the games <laughs> like he's on some sort of apprenticeship and then doesn't really make any of the big shots. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think they've, they've brought him in with Hamstrike. He's sort of like in the background. Mm. He's sort of part of the recruitment team. He's there to make deals, but he's not... He's not Mark Overmars. He's not coming out in front of the press every week, giving giving interviews. Um, Hampshire's doing that a bit more, but yeah, I just think that the loss of Mark Overmars has dented the club in terms of recruitment and just power behind the scenes. I don't think Overmars would have stood for for Shrouder being this bad. Um, I just don't think there's that backbone there that's going to sack sack Shrouder. Um, yeah, I think a lot of Ajax fans would go, why don't you just get rid of him and bring in Peter Bosch, for instance. 
whether that's right or wrong. I mean, I don't think Bosch is as great a manager as everyone makes him out to be. Mm-hmm. But I think showing some leadership and saying, right, this hasn't been good enough. This isn't Ajax way. You're gone. I mean, Ajax should be still in the Champions League. They should still be um, top of the table. They should have an exciting attacking team that's bringing through youngsters. But all that seems to have just stagnated um, yeah. at the moment. And yeah, it's, it's not great. Mm. Let's move on to another team anyway. Let's talk about PSV. A lot of positive for them, except for the fact they've lost Cody Hapo, the best player in the league. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. He's he's left now, a top scorer in the Eredivisie as well. And um, he's gone, gone to Liverpool, fair play to him. Um, all, all the best in there. He's going to do really well, I think. But what does that, how does that leave PSV? I mentioned there that they played AC Milan in a friendly in the break, bit them 3 0. And Nadi Madueke was a, a, a bit of a, a star in that game. Makes me wonder, despite losing someone like Hapo, they have still got a lot of tools. Like Luke Young has been pretty good as a striker. They just need someone to get the crosses into him now that Hapo's gone. Um, Chavi Simons is still there and he's still going to go on to develop into a, a brilliant player this season. I hope he stays at PSV after that. And um, there's, there's some decent players around it too. I, I mean, I mean, like the defensively, they're not like the strongest PSV, but I think they have enough and are in a bit less disarray than Ajax, for example. And then if they can bring in someone else to add to that, then brilliant. But I, I don't, I don't actually think that's going to happen. I wonder if there's a bit more reliance on Madueke and Simons to get the goals with Luke De Jong now. Uh, maybe Amor guys get some more minutes on the left side. But do, do they have enough? to challenge finals and, and still Ajax to get the Eredivisie title, Mike? Because I don't think they do, but I think that this kind of one team not quite being that much better than the other is going to make for a brilliant title race. See, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't rule out PSV. Um, no, I don't think I, I, can, I, think I can, that, can either. I think that the start of the season... They were hampered by the fact that Luke De Jong got injured and mm. they had to keep playing Simmons for the middle. And there's a few times where El Ghazi was starting as a striker. Mm. And yeah, they were overly reliant on Gakpo coming up with the goals and the assists. You know, he leaves his top goal scorer, he leaves his top assister in the league. Obviously, that's going to be a big loss. But now that De Jong's fit and he's a definite starter, and then you've got Nani Madueke who's back fit. And looking great in the friendlies leading up to this. I mean, his, his goals against AC Milan were brilliant. And if he keeps showing that, then sadly for PSV, he's going to be a player that leaves in the summer, but for yeah. probably another 40 to 50 million. They can process the loss of Gakpo by, yes, both Van Nistelrooy and Brands have both come out and said, oh, but we've got El Ghazi. This is where <laughs> we brought in because we knew. Gakpo was going to leave, so they've brought in mm. the replacement already, and they're very, being very coy on the fact that, oh, we'll, we'll maybe sign someone if if the chance comes up. Oh yeah, um, but the players that they're getting linked to are more strikers, so they'll be linked to mm. Dave Fofana, who's just signing for Chelsea now, um, young striker from Mould, and if they are going to loan him out, then maybe PSG will take him on, but. It's a bit strange to think that why would he be going for a striker when they've got yeah. Wood Young and I think they do need a second striker, but that's not their priority. Yeah. Um, we've seen other players been played in that position when Luke Young hasn't been there, and they probably do need somebody else, especially if they're going to go far in Europe. But uh, yeah, Capo's goals in the wing and, and his delivery. I don't, I don't see how Amwal Garty can really replace that if PSV want to have a good chance at, at things. Yeah, I think that the problem with PSV at the moment is it's probably not been well documented, but finance wise, they really wanted to sell Gakpo in the summer. Mm. And the director at the time, John De Jong, basically came out in an interview and said, I was sacked because I didn't sell Gakpo because mm. of the finances that that left him in, because he needed that sort of like 50, 60 million pound transfer in the summer it never really happened um obviously they've, they've got that now you know they're not revealing how much they've got for them um but some people are saying it's you know above 50 million if a uh, bonus and stuff like that but i think a lot of that money is not going to go towards transfers i think it's going to go towards that hole that got left in the summer 
and then maybe they'll look for loans or or small signings. That's why somebody like Jesper Carlson, who we'll probably speak about later on, is not a target for him because he's too expensive. Hmm. So the left wingers that they'd probably be looking at to replace Gakpo probably won't be available until the summer when they can maybe go out and say, right, Carlson will sign him for 10 million. Right now, they're probably looking for somebody that's a stop gap for like two to three or alone. Um, what that looks like, not really sure, because is there a player out there that they can come in on the left wing on loan from a top club and instantly replace Gakpo? It's, it's hard. But if you take that out of the equation, the rest of the pitch, I think, is pretty strong. You've still got Sangari in midfield. He was excellent against AC Milan. You then you've got Joey Veerman with a point to prove after missing out in the World Cup. And then you've got Xavi Simmons, the most exciting player for me in their division at the moment. Then at the back, not strong, but then Boscagli's missed all season so far. So he's come back into it. If he can come back into it and yeah. show what he was doing last season, then that's a huge bonus for them. Um, yeah. And then what they really need is Walter Benitez to cut out the mistakes. I think they need him to... <laughs> To, to show why he he was a good signing in the summer because it's good goalkeeper isn't first, he as well yeah during the first half he was unlucky there's a few mistakes they made and everyone's like oh no I've done it again myself included thinking oh no I've <laughs> bought another Joel Dromo um, but I think if they keep that spine of the defence together the midfield's looking good and then up front if they if they can bring in a winger maybe it's one that's not getting linked to them so far um then I think they're pretty set. And I think that with Luke De Jong up front, Xavi Simmons running around and Madueke in fire, I can't say that they're not going to win the title. I think that they've got a really good chance. Mm. And there is another team that I think is in the equation for the title race. And that's Arsenal and Altmar. I know FC Twenter, people will say, but they're, they're also up there in that sort of top five. We will talk about them. But I just think RZ have had a brilliant winter break. They have got players that have the potential to surprise. Pascal Janssen, his hot one minute cold the next, isn't he, with both of us and a lot of Dutch football fans, I think, in general. But Jesper Carlsen is back fit and looks in red hot form. I think that there's a transfer coming from him in the summer. He stayed another year with Arzo, which is a great decision. And there's goals of Pavlidis. There's um, a pretty tight defence, apart from Hobby Verhulst as a goalkeeper, you could say. Um, the midfield looks interesting. They've got a new a new midfielder from from the US. We will talk about as well. It looks like they've got a lot of pieces of this puzzle coming together at just the right time. They're in the last sixteen of the conference league. That that could be another avenue for them. And actually, that's where I think that they might struggle a little bit. Is that they'll be so invested in Europe and it's something they can go, go really far in, like Final did last season. But it might hamper them in the league because they don't have that depth in the squad that they do have the potential to beat any of those of the top three. And I think that's what makes them a really interesting proposition. Um, are you as excited as I am, Mike? Yeah. And <clears throat> I'll, I'll admit that in the summer, I thought that AZ had, had a bad summer. I thought that Janssen wasn't going to do a good job. And I thought that they were going to have uh, a poor season. But yeah, they've proved me totally wrong. I think that they've been great. Um, and I think that they do have a chance in the second half of the season because of their attack. You've got Carlson back. They've got Pavidis fit. They've also got Odgaard as well, who's, mm. who's a good air to busy forward. And then if they lose one of them, they've got you know Van Broderode, who's, who's coming through. Um, really good dribbler, really good young dribbler. They've got Evian as well, um, the Norwegian midfielder. He scored a couple of goals in the winter break and he's looking good and then as you've said they've got this new midfielder from America, uh, Mihailovic who there's a lot of excitement about, um, so it'll be interesting to see how he does and I think that the game, the, the player sorry, that I think has, has gone for the season if I was to name my most underrated Eredivisie team of the season or, or player of the season it's got to be to Johnny Reinders in the midfield because I think Love he's Reinders, having an outstanding yeah. campaign mm. um, he chips in with goals he chips in with assists He's, he's a powerful runner in midfield. I think he's been great. And I can't believe in the summer there, there was rumours that they're trying to get rid of him. Um, there was rumours mm. that he could be going to 20. Mm. Because for me, he's been their best midfielder. Um, yeah. yeah, Jordi Classy, he gets into the Netherlands squad. But I think Reinders has been excellent. And if Ronald Koeman was to bring him in, if he continues his form and Ronald Koeman named him in the squad, I'd be like, fair enough. He, he deserves it. Yeah. Um, and he's, a, he's probably a late bloomer because he's 24 now. I think that 
if he keeps showing this sort of form, I don't see why <clears throat> you wouldn't be linked to a move to Ajax or, or PSV or, or Feyenoord. Maybe go that next step. Mm. So all over the pitch as well. I think that they've had injuries at the back. I mean, Martin's Indy was out for a little bit. Um, you will come back. The, the, the player they signed from Inter um, in the summer, Van Husen, he's never had a game um, really yeah. because of injuries. So I think he's come into it. And the left back, I think, <clears throat> Kerkes, I think he's had... Yeah, Kerkes, great player, isn't he? He's had an outstanding start to the season. So they're an exciting squad. I think that they've got a balance. As you said, their goalkeeper is probably not the strongest. Um, they've had that issue for the past couple of years. They need to find a new goalkeeper. Maybe they'll do something in January to sort that. But I think all the rest of the pitch is looking really good. And I think that the Janssen is, is sort of the team spirit. They've got a good team spirit. They've got a good shape at the back, good midfield, and then a strong attack for their division as well. So I think that they'll pick up enough points that they'll stay in the mix going into the season. I think that they'll also cause a few shocks in the big games as well. They've already yeah. beaten Ajax this season. I think that they will take points off of Feyenoord. I think they will take the points off of PSV. And at the moment, you can't rule them out because there's enough there to say that they are in the title race and they deserve to be there. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited about watching AZ for the second half of the season because I think there's, there's some good players in there. Yeah, they're really exciting to, to to watch. They they seem to be quite tight defensively. Like I said, apart from the goalkeeper, perhaps you could say is a slight weak link. The defenders, though, in general, they work well together. Hatsi Diakos is coming into some good form again. You've got the fullbacks that are marauding, attacking fullbacks, Masugawada and Kirkes, but they are also quite good defensively and work well together as a team. The midfield is stacked with quality. You're looking at probably classes the sixth, Reiners as the eight, and then Mihailovic is coming for, I think, like six million euros, which is quite a high fee for RZ as number 10. Then the front three in front of them are full of goals. It's It would be ridiculous to warm out of a title race, and but it would be so exciting if they won the thing, wouldn't it? But we we were talking at the start of the season about probably Ajax first, PSV second, final third, and RZ fourth. It could be the other way around. And um, I wouldn't be surprised, for example, if it were final and RZ as a top two at this rate. But this is what makes it so exciting. And yet again, I'll, I'll say it. We want to hear your, your thoughts in the, in the comments. If if you want to tell us who you think your top four will be. It's so tough to predict though. And I wouldn't rule out any of the four of them winning the league. But, you know, something will change. There'll be a transfer in January. Might be like an injury that hits a team. I mean, trying already missing for fine odds. It's a big one. Perhaps Timber out as well for a bit. Um, yeah, it's going to be really tight. And that's what makes it really so exciting when we've got a really good title race in our hands. This is a brilliant chance, I think, to put up the Eredivisie table. So I'm just going to share my screen and, and let's talk, uh, have a top four. Mike, let me ask you then, I'm just going to put this on the screen. Before, before we move on to the race, who do you think, if you're going to put money on it, which is, which is hard to say, because I think, I think many people would be brave to probably predict this this discipline. Um, Hopefully the league is just coming up now. Can you see that, Mike? And if so, yeah. who do you think will win the league? <coughs> hmm. it, is, it is really tough right now. I mean, if you look at four points separating top four, all of them have a chance. And we're we're only yeah. on the 2nd of January. So, I mean, we're not seeing what the full squads are by the end of January. Um, oh. I'm going to stick my neck out and say PSV at one, Feyenoord at two. I axe at three mm. and AZ at four. So, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with RZ fourth as well, that they have got a brilliant team, but there's a lack of depth. Perhaps they'll go far in Europe and keep them as fourth. And then I think final are going to finish in that top two. I don't see how they, at this point now, are going to finish third or fourth. I think there's just too much quality. They're on the up, slots the head coach. So then it's, well, who's going to fall out of that top two? And with PSV on the up as well, it couldn't be Ajax that finished third, and that would surprise so many people. But I think something uncomfortable is going to happen in that top four. It won't set into that routine that we've been expecting over the past few years. That something different is going to happen here. Um, and many of us neutral Dutch football fans are wearing my RZ shirt right now, but never many neutral fans want to see a different team of an Ajax win the league. Um, and I think that's going to be finals at the minute. 
but it might just because they're sitting three points clear. <laughs> I mean, it could all change in a couple of weeks. We've got Utrecht in their first game back. Um, let's let's touch upon this next clutch teams then, shall we? The other two tables up on the screen. FC Twente are not are, are in that top five people would consider in the Eredivisie, but I just don't think they have the the um, the ruthlessness, if you like, to to put enough goals past teams, and they do struggle away from home. Their home record is is so impressive. It's the best in the league. They've got the best defence in the league, only considered nine goals out of 14 games. But like I said, away from home, they're not the same team. Then you've got Sparta Rotterdam in sixth, who've had a great season. I think Toby, Tobias Laritzen, the strikers, has gone completely unnoticed by a lot of, a lot of Dutch football fans. Um, Utrecht in seventh, win a lot of games under Henk Fraser before before he decided to have a punch up with Amin Yunus <laughs> over the winter break. So they've got a new head coach now, Michael Silberbauer. And then Herdenvein, who have... Our wonderful goalkeeper, Andy Snoppert, and a bunch of other good players to make quite a defensively resolute team. Who do you think is going to... I mean, uh, we're kind of predicting the whole table again here, aren't we, Mike? We'll be at the start of the season. But who do you think is going to be fifth and sixth out of there? Because fifth could get you... Um, uh, sorry, no, because fifth to eighth is, is a, are the playoffs if a team at the top of the table wins the Dutch Cup. Do you think any of these teams here are first of all going to, um, to jump into the top four? And um, who who do you think will make the playoffs, Mike? Do you think it could be those teams there, given the gap that's already there till ninth? Yeah, I think it's pretty set that that's going to be the four that's going to go into the playoffs. I think that you know, mm. there's already a six point gap, and I think that if you look at the games, there is a, a gulf in quality between there NAC Nijmegen yeah. and Heron Vane. I think that and the teams below NAC Nijmegen, I mean, any of them could get dragged into a relegation battle. Any of them could finish ninth I think that it's so up and down I don't think anyone was going to sneak into the playoffs and have a, a great run because this is so unpredictable with those teams um but those four I think that they've been the four outside of the usuals that have been the outstanding teams in the league this season I think that 20 Ron Jans has done a great job with them I think that yes. he's taken them from obviously coming up from relegation bring them back and this establishing them back has been the a top six side in their division. I don't think, as you said, they're ready to push into that top four yet. I think they're missing a couple of players. And I still think that they're a side right now that once they bring through a player, it's going to get mm. nabbed off them for not a lot of money um, by one of the top teams. So like Mies Hilgers, I was standing centre back, young Dutch. He's got to play a few games and then he's got to get picked up maybe by fine or this month or another club in the summer and mm. that's just the way it's going to go um Ramiz Saruki their outstanding midfielder I think he's still there isn't he he's, he's injured at the moment um mm. hopefully it's not a long in time injury because he's so crucial but if he keeps playing well he's going to go as well um <clears throat> but I think that overall their squad is good enough to finish fifth They've got the goals in, in Ricky Van Voelswinkel. Yeah, he misses a lot of chances. He, he went through a little bit of drought at the start of the season. Mm. But he's a good Eredivisie goal scorer. He misses a lot of penalties. He, what happens. But he's you can rely on him for goals. It's like with, with Heron Vane. They've got Sidney Van Hoydonk, who is a good mid-table Eredivisie striker. Him and Saar as a partnership is going to get you goals. Yeah. I think that a lot of people expected it to be Saar that would be the one that would be up there with the, the goals. Mm. Um, but he's more of the sort of the the sister to Van Hoydonk at the moment. Um, so we're not seeing Saar among the goals just yet. I think he's only got three this season. Whereas Van Hoydonk's one of the top goal scorers in the league. Um, but that partnership means that they'll definitely be in the, the playoffs. I can even see them finishing sixth in the league. I think they might move up. Um, yeah. If they keep everyone fit, and I'll be twenty and fifth, Henry and sixth, and then Utrecht, and then Sparta. I think Sparta, as you said, Lawrence has been great. Um, they've pushed on from last season, being around the, the bottom half again. I think that yeah, he's done a great job, and I think that they will finish in the playoffs. I think that that's where they sort of they deserve to sit now. I can't mm. see them winning that playoff and going to Europe, but I think they're a good mm. side just to to challenge for that that top seven. Utrecht. I think Great. there's a lot of question question marks around them at the moment. I think that 
I think Fraser was doing an okay job. I don't think Utrecht are doing what they sh- should be doing this season with the players mm. that they've got. Um, they brought in Bas Dost, they brought in Redan. I think they should be winning more games. Um, in midfield, they brought in Turnstra. Um, they've still got Van der Streek. The defence seems okay. And they've got a, a squad that should be doing better than what they're doing at the moment in the seventh. I think that if Silverbar can come in and lift them and, and bring them to that next level, but he's he's never been a head coach anywhere, so it's a risk. Mm. And it's one for me that it's quite infuriating that if Utrecht had the ambition that they say that they do, surely they would have went for a more top quality coach to come in and take them to that next level. Instead, it's an ex-player that could be okay as a coach. Mm. He was assistant there last year. Maybe they saw enough of him as being an assistant to take him to that next level. Maybe I'll be eating my words at the end of the season when they finish finish fourth. But I can't see it. Um, I think that you try to... Uh, the fans must be frustrated because you keep yeah. going into the season thinking, oh, this is going to be our year to challenge for a top four spot. Oh, we've signed well this summer. And then it just doesn't happen. Um, and then when they sack a coach, they bring in somebody like Silver Barrow with no experience, no, no clout. Um, that's so, kind of the way though isn't it because you, you're you a team that doesn't have that kind of financial power they've got some good players now who if they can be unlocked with their potential they can they can finish in those upper places and you have to take that risk with the head coach don't you you know is he going to be if he's rubbish they've been mid-table no problem but if he's really good they've got a gem haven't they they can keep and um, help turn the club into something really exciting but that's it, isn't it? You have to take that risk because that, that mid table club in the area of Vizier, you can't. I mean, it's like, it's like Van Nistelrooy as the head coach of PSV. For them, it's the same kind of thing, isn't it? That he's one of theirs. And if he turns out to be a magnificent head coach because he was pretty good with the youth teams, they reap the benefits of it. And that's kind of how it, it, it can work sometimes in Dutch football um, with players and coaches, right? Yeah. But with Van Nistelrooy, he had that time in charge. Of... Young PSV had a charge time in under 19s and he did well enough to mm. to earn that place. Whereas Silverbar has not even been a head coach anywhere, he's only been an assistant um, yeah. and a youth coach, and it's given him the top job. I have to say, yes, I'm I'm happy they've done that because it sort of it brings a new face in. Because I, one thing that we always criticize Dutch clubs for is they recycle their coaches, one gets sacked, mm. they bring in one that has been sacked from another club. And it's the same names constantly around. So it's not as if they sacked Fraser and then brought in Dick Advocat again. You know, it's, it's, it's a new name in there, which is good for the league. But I think they could have been a little bit more, more ambitious. But I, I could be proved wrong. I think that they could end the season really well. Because um, they've got the players to do it. I think Taylor Booth looks like a very exciting player in midfield. Mm. Um, so he could be one that, that brings in. And then I think all eyes will be on Amon Yunus now. Does he... What does he do? Because they've they've kept him. Fraser's gone. Well, I mean, he's playing the second half of the season. Because um, if he does, and he shows some form, he could be another asset for him. But yeah. we'll see. I, I, I had high hopes for him going into the start of the season. It didn't work out as well as I thought it was going to. But if Silverbar comes in and gets them playing well, they could be a team that, that challenges 20 for a top five spot. But I think there's a lot of question marks over at the moment. Mm. A Dutch Cup as well will be interesting for a number of these teams that that have above average OWZ players. Can they have, get some silverware with the top clubs busy in Europe and the title race? Let's move on to the rest of the table. Relegation after eighth, there's a huge gap to NEC and then, then the rest going down. Of course, we're watching YouTube is sharing the OWZ table right now on the screen. Who's gonna who's gonna get relegated? Having watched a fair bit of Volland this season, it is a shame. I thought they would stay up. I thought they'd have the goals to do it, but they don't look great. And despite Rimyot being a good head coach, I don't think I think he's a bit powerless to to what's gonna go happen there. Um, one win all season, don't see it happening for them. Um, Combo have been pretty poor, but Sjors LT coming in as a head coach might make a difference. And then have Dick Lakeen as a head coach. They were great last season coming up get promoted but again I don't know I think if they're not going to finish in that bottom three they're going to be like 15th or 14th highest 
Then you've got Cronigan who have got decides to hire the, the assistant coach as the head coach. I think that's a really risky decision. A big club here that could get relegated. And then there's Excelsior, who we all thought would finish rock bottom <laughs> outside the relegation zone and might even stay up. But for me, those are the, the bottom five now. And I think will be the ones in trouble come the end of the season. I think everyone else above that, they have enough. They're, they will be safe. How about you? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at Excelsior on the same amount of points as Vitesse, but I think that yeah. with Vitesse, I think they'll have enough to pull them away. I think Kaku will do enough in the second half of the season to right the wrongs. And bringing in somebody like Davy Proper back, I think it's just great to see because obviously he fell in love with football yeah. at PSV, but if they can get him back fit and playing, he's a great player, especially for somebody that's battling at the bottom of the table. Um so I think bringing him in for experience head there would be great. And I think that they'll pull away. So I think they'll be they'll be 11th or, or 10th come the end of the season, um, which is still a terrible season for them. But I, I don't think they're going to be relegated now. Um, Cronin is one that I look at, and I think they're in big trouble. Um, yeah, they've got Pepe up front and score goals. But why did he just hire an assistant and not show again some ambition to try and get them out of this i know that this is what dutch clubs do they they sometimes go right we'll put somebody in charge to the end of the season hedge our bets and then come the summer we'll then bring in somebody new give them a fresh start but i think defensively they look terrible i think that some of the players have brought in from my like young young ajax haven't worked out um mm. they've not got enough in attack to to pull them away. I think they've lost, well, they've lost eight games this season already. Um, it used to be that they relied so heavily on their home form to get them out of situations like this. Like the Euroborg was like a fortress for them; they would be able to pick up yeah. points of of anyone. That's no longer the case. I think that teams don't go there anymore, um, thinking they're going to lose or thinking they're going to have a tough game. I think that they might be quite busy this month. I think that if looking at those sides of the bottom, I think Hornigan will recruit and try and pull themselves out of it, which might give them enough. Because I think Volendam, I think we can write them off now. I think we'll say that they're, they're gone. Yeah. I think that they do have some good attackers, but defensively they're, they're just not good enough um, for the top fight. And I think that they'll be on the end of another couple of big results between now and the end of the season. Um, Canberra, as you said, they've looked poor. I think that losing Hank de Jong, um, to, to what he went through, I think that that's a big blow for them. I think if he was still in charge, I think that they'd had more of a chance to stay up. LT is a decent yeah, head I mean, coach. it's been going on for a year, this, hasn't it? Like, Cumber yeah. been going, I mean, like a, a st- a slice falling like a stone down this area of his table for, for, for a year. And that was since De Jong's um, poor health, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, looking at the squad, I just don't know if they've got, right now, they've got the players that are going to get them out of this. Because I think that, Teams like Go Ahead Eagles, you look at them and you think, like, right, maybe they shouldn't have this squad to, to keep them away, but they've got exciting players in attack. Whereas if you look at Cabo, who are they going to get the goals from? They've got Tom Burr, um, not a real Eredivisie striker. They've got Odrikis up front, the Latvian, um, didn't score enough goals. Then they've got, who's the backup there to them? Um, a Swiss striker on loan from Young Boys. They've got Sylvester van der Water, who obviously left Heracles to go to America, has come back. He's not been good enough so far. I just don't think their squad has the depth to take him out of this. So I think that they'll be second bottom. And then it's really just a fight between the rest of them. I think that Excelsior, I think, have done better than what we thought they were. But that's because they've got a couple of good attackers. They've got Azurkan up front. I think that he's been, been good. And he's shown that he could potentially handle the level of a final that they've given a chance. Mm. Um Reda Karkusha didn't work out for him at Sparta, but he seems to be doing well at Excelsior, given the chance for them. And then in the midfield, they've got players such as Ayub, um, mm. who at this level is good enough to, to, to propel a team from being a relegation fight to a mid-table type. And then they've brought in Kick Piri from Ajax, with somebody to prove um, for defence. So I think they'll be okay. Um, yeah, it's hard to predict. But I think, I mean, I think as it is now is what it will finish at the end of the season. I think they'll awesome. be Volendam, Canberra, and Emin, and then 
in the summer, I think that Emin will say goodbye to Dick Lukin. I think he'll leave. And then, you know, we were discussing it before um, we, we went live. I think that he will go to a club like Ronigan in the summer. I think that if mm-hmm. Emin go down for the playoffs, you know, they might stay up for the playoffs. But if they get a playoff spot, then Lukin will then leave in the summer, take over at Cronigan and be their new manager next season. But yeah, I think that the three clubs that they are now are the, the three that I'll say are favourites to to go down. But Cronigan, if they don't recruit well this this month, um, could be dragged in there, which could be, be a big shot. Yeah, yeah. But we've seen yeah. it in the past. We've seen I that just... Pex Vol weren't safe last year. You got Adam Den Hag down there, Heracles down there. Like yeah. teams like Cronigan, they can't. Twenty probably get it before. Yeah, teams like Cronigan, they can't rely on the fact that oh we're too big to go down because yeah. it's shown that nobody's too big to go down. No. Um, it's the same with Vitesse. If they kept going as, as they were going at the start of the season, mm. they could have been dragged into it because they weren't good enough. But I think they have enough now to keep them away. But yeah. Yeah. The only team I think could fall into it is Excelsior because they had the wins at the start of the season and they've kind of been rumbling along since then and falling down the table. Um, they are still really leaky defensively. They're looking to have Stein van Hassel as their goalkeeper. He's made a load of saves. But it, yeah, if if you were to say anyone getting out of that bottom three, I think it's going to be Cumber, but that's just because of Sears LT showing the past. He can get a team together that can win a lot of games. Um, I'm going to say before we finish, it, let's just touch quickly upon the other teams. I, I think go ahead, Eagles, uh, on, on an unbeaten run of nine games in the league. And uh, they, they, they are they are surprising me every, each week. And EC9 make, and they've got Jasper Sillison as their goalkeeper. Um, some decent players, but I, I, whilst they'd be out of relegation trouble, they haven't got the goals I've made to pump them up the league. And our EKC Volvike signed Matt Sjöntins over the, the winter break. He's a new striker from Fortuna Sittards. Him, Michael Kramer and Belhasani behind them could be could be worth some goals, I think. Definitely will keep them out of trouble. And Fortuna Sittards up and down with their new manager, um, Julio Velasquez. Um, but your man's their striker. But I just think it's going to be more of the same, more consistency from them. They might surprise one week and then lose lose at home to someone they shouldn't be the next. And that'll be their season. So good to talk about each team, Mike. Um, and I think those people that love our AWC content have been very satisfied by this, this content today. Um, if people have enjoyed it, do let us know. Leave a like wherever you're in and comment on YouTube what you think will happen this second half of the season. Who do you think will win the league? Um, and of course, stay in tune with our website. We've got loads of content coming up over there for the RWC in the coming weeks. Um, predictions will be back up as well for each week. And um, of course, follow us on Twitter. Our handles are, are just here on screen. And enjoy our content for the second half of the season. Much more to come. Um, not just the RWC, of course, Dutch national team too. Um, any final thoughts, Mike? Um, no, it's just that I'm glad to have the season back. Um, it has been, yeah. because obviously the Dutch winter break, it has been a long time since the end of the World Cup to starting again. Um, I think that there is, for me, a lot of excitement around the league at the moment with, with the title race. It's going to be a tight one. Um, I'm intrigued to see what happens in January. It's going to be a tough month for, for some of the clubs. I think that all clubs will be active. I think there'll be a lot of signings. And then, um, yeah, I think that we just need to enjoy having the, the season back and, We'll see how it goes and we'll be doing a review podcast the next time uh, May, June comes along. And then hopefully we'll be talking about the fact that it was a great second half of the season where was the twists and turns and was the youngsters coming through. And yeah, it should just be an exciting couple of months. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, Mike. And thanks everyone for listening. Um, leave us a like and comment down below what your, what your thoughts are. Bye for now.